Welcome to Monetize Your Mind, Making Money on YouTube. I'm Luna, and today we have two incredible guests who will provide us with expert insights and priceless advice on turning your YouTube channel into a profitable business. Get ready to optimize your content and maximize your revenue generation with the help of Maxwell Green and Aria Rivers. Maxwell, um, let's start with you. Can you break down for us why understanding your audience is the first step towards monetizing your YouTube channel? Absolutely, Luna. Knowing your audience is crucial because it directs everything from the content you create to how you market it. For example, demographics such as age, location, and interests can influence the types of videos that will resonate with your viewers. This, in turn, affects engagement rates, which are key to boosting ad revenue and securing sponsorships. I completely agree with Maxwell. When I started focusing on who my audience was and what they truly wanted, my engagement rates skyrocketed. It wasn't just about creating content I thought was great. It was about creating content that spoke directly to my audience's needs and interests. Interesting. Aria, can you give us an example of how you adapted your content to better meet your audience's needs? Sure. My channel initially focused on a broad range of lifestyle topics, but through comments and analytics, I noticed a high engagement in my DIY home decor videos. So I started creating more of those, and within months, I saw a significant increase in my subscriber count and video views. That's a great example, Aria. And it highlights another key point, the importance of YouTube analytics. Creators should dive deep into their analytics to understand not just who their audience is, but how they interact with their content. Watch time, likes, comments, and subscriber growth can all provide insights into what's working and what's not. Speaking of analytics, Maxwell, how often should creators be checking their analytics to keep up with audience trends? Ideally, creators should review their analytics regularly, I'd say weekly at a minimum. This doesn't mean you need to obsess over every little fluctuation, but being aware of the overall trends can help you adapt more quickly. For instance, if you notice a drop in engagement, you can investigate and rectify the issue much faster. And don't forget, engaging with your audience through comments and community posts can also provide invaluable insights. Sometimes, direct feedback from your viewers can reveal what analytics might not make immediately obvious. True, direct interaction can certainly foster a closer community feeling as well. Now, for those just starting out, what would be your top tip for beginning to understand their audience? I would say, start by defining who you want your audience to be. Sketch out a profile of your ideal viewer, including their interests and problems they might be facing that your content can solve. Then, use your initial videos to test and refine your understanding. Pay close attention to which videos gain traction and explore why. Adding to that, Utilize the tools YouTube provides. Look into the Audience tab in YouTube Analytics to see demographic data and interests. Also, keep an eye on your competition. See who's engaging with similar content and what discussions are happening there. That's incredibly insightful. It seems like a blend of analytics and direct communication with your audience is key. Maxwell. From a technical standpoint, what's one common mistake you see creators making when trying to understand their audience? One of the most common mistakes is focusing too much on subscriber count rather than engagement metrics. Subscribers are great, but active engagement, comments, likes, shares, signals a healthy, interested community. Also, creators often fail to notice patterns in viewer drop-off within their videos, which can indicate when and why viewers lose interest. Absolutely, Maxwell. Watching my own videos and analyzing where people drop off helped me understand what parts of my content were not resonating. It's a bit of a reality check, but incredibly valuable for improvement. So for both of you, how important is experimenting with content while maintaining consistency? Does this not risk alienating your original audience? It's a delicate balance. On one hand, you want to keep your content fresh and engaging. On the other, you don't want to stray too far from what your audience loves about your channel. 
I try to introduce new topics gradually, as special segments to test the waters without making a drastic shift. To add to that, Luna, experimentation within a consistent framework, can actually help creators grow. Think of it as expanding rather than changing your content. Use data from analytics to guide these experiments. See what new topics or formats your audience might engage with based on their existing preferences. It sounds like successful YouTube content creation is as much an art as it is a science. Arya, any final thoughts on this? Yes, it definitely is. My advice is to be patient and persistent. Success on YouTube doesn't happen overnight. It's about consistently offering value to your audience, understanding their needs and interests, and not being afraid to evolve with them. You mentioned the importance of engaging with the audience. Can you share more about how direct engagement impacts monetization? Engagement boosts the visibility of your videos through YouTube's algorithm. The more your audience comments, likes, and shares, the more likely your videos are to be recommended to new viewers. This directly impacts monetization because it increases your ad revenue potential and enhances your attractiveness to brands for sponsorships. Absolutely. And to build on what Aria said, engaging with your audience also provides invaluable insights into what your viewers truly value. This can guide your content strategy, ensuring you create more of what works and less of what doesn't, optimizing your channel for financial success. That makes a lot of sense. Moving towards the YouTube Partner Program specifically, could you break down some of the key eligibility requirements and benefits? Sure, Luna. To be eligible for the YouTube Partner Program, creators need to have at least 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 watch hours over the past 12 months. Once in the program, creators can monetize their content through ads, channel memberships, super chats, and more. It's a gateway to diverse revenue streams. And don't forget the community aspect. Being part of the YPP also means having access to YouTube's creator support teams and more detailed analytics. This can be a game changer in how you manage and grow your channel. It sounds like reaching those initial YPP criteria is a crucial first step for monetization. How do you recommend creators approach this milestone? From personal experience, focus on creating content that genuinely interests you. Passion shines through and can be incredibly contagious. Combine that with consistent uploading and engagement and you'll start building a community that wants to support your channel, helping you reach those YPP milestones. And leverage every tool at your disposal. SEO techniques for your video titles, descriptions, and tags can help your content be discovered by a wider audience. Think of it as laying down a network of breadcrumbs for viewers to follow back to your channel. Speaking of SEO, there's often a lot of emphasis on keywords. Could you dive a bit deeper into how exactly should approach keyword research and optimization? Absolutely, Luna. It's not just about stuffing your titles and descriptions full of keywords. It's about understanding what your potential viewers are searching for and then crafting your content to meet those needs. Tools like Google's Keyword Planner and YouTube's own search suggest feature can offer invaluable insights into the search terms people are using. That's a great point, Maxwell. And it's not just about the technical aspects of SEO. It's also storytelling. Your title and description should tell a compelling story about what viewers will gain from watching your video. That narrative approach can really boost engagement. Spot on, Aria. And once those viewers are engaged, it's crucial to keep them coming back for more. This means not only producing quality content, but also being consistent in your upload schedule. YouTube's algorithm favors channels that post regularly. Consistency seems to be a recurring theme here. Arya, how do you maintain a consistent upload schedule while ensuring your content remains high quality and engaging? It's definitely a balancing act, Luna. For me, planning is key. I spend a lot of time brainstorming and outlining content in advance. This helps me stay ahead of my schedule and also allows space for creativity. And importantly, I listen to my audience. 
Their feedback directly influences what I create next, ensuring the content is both engaging and valuable to them. Listening to your audience appears to be a crucial part of the equation. How do you both recommend creators foster that kind of open dialogue with their viewers? Engagement is a two-way street. Encouraging comments on your videos is a start, but actively responding to those comments, asking for feedback, and even incorporating viewer suggestions into your content can deepen the connection with your audience. And don't overlook the power of other social media platforms to extend that dialogue. I use Twitter, Instagram, and even Discord to keep the conversation going with my community. It creates a more rounded and engaging experience for them beyond just the videos I upload to YouTube. Fascinating insights. Now we've talked about fostering engagement and creating a dialogue with your audience, but how do you translate that engagement into actual revenue? What's the real secret sauce behind making money on YouTube? Ah, that's the golden question, isn't it? In my experience, it's a mix of diversification and optimization. While ad revenue is the most obvious source of income, successful YouTubers don't stop there. They explore affiliate marketing, sponsored content, merchandise, and even memberships through YouTube's channel membership feature. It's about broadening your revenue streams while optimizing content to appeal to those various income sources. Exactly, Maxwell. And emphasizing the importance of a personal brand can't be overstated. Your brand is what sets you apart and makes companies want to partner with you. For instance, my unique approach to storytelling and engaging with my audience has opened up numerous sponsorship opportunities. Those partnerships then feed back into creating content that benefits my viewers, creating a positive cycle. That's a great point about brand. But creating a personal brand sounds daunting. How can creators start to build their brand on YouTube? It starts with authenticity. Viewers are drawn to creators who are genuine and passionate about their content. From there, it's about consistency, not just in upload schedules, but in the quality and themes of your content. Your brand should reflect who you are and what you stand for, which in turn helps you connect with like-minded viewers and brands. I'd add that it involves a lot of experimentation too. When I first started, I tried several content styles and themes before I found my niche. Engaging with my audience and seeing what resonated with them helped me refine my brand. It's a journey, but staying true to yourself and being open to evolving based on feedback is key. So embracing authenticity, experimentation, and feedback is crucial in building a strong brand and monetizing your YouTube channel. It's not just about creating content, but creating a community around your content. Absolutely, Luna. And let's not forget the technical side of things, like SEO, search engine optimization. Understanding how to properly tag your videos, craft engaging titles, and write compelling descriptions can significantly impact your content's visibility. More visibility means more potential revenue. Oh, that's a game changer, Maxwell. I've seen a substantial difference in my video performances when I've taken the time to research and apply strong SEO practices. It's like giving your videos a turbo boost in the YouTube algorithm. SEO seems intimidating to a lot of people. Maxwell, could you simplify how a beginner might approach SEO for their content? Certainly, Luna. Think of SEO as telling YouTube exactly what your video is about so it can show it to the right people. Start simple. Use keywords in your title and description that someone might type into YouTube's search bar. Also, using these keywords naturally in your video's dialogue helps since YouTube's algorithm can now interpret video content directly. Integrating SEO keywords into the dialogue is something I hadn't considered much before. It's a subtle way to boost your video without disrupting the viewer's experience. Speaking of viewer experience, how important is video quality in retaining viewers and attracting subscribers? Critically important. You don't necessarily need the most expensive equipment, but clear audio and visuals make a world of difference. It's about respecting your viewers' time and providing value through quality content. Agreed. And there's data to back this up. Videos with higher production quality 
tend to perform better in terms of engagement and watch time, which are key metrics for YouTube's recommendation algorithm. Essentially, better quality can lead to more exposure. It seems like a balance between focusing on the technical aspects, like SEO and video quality, and the human aspects, like authenticity and engaging directly with your community, is essential for success on YouTube. Absolutely, Luna. And speaking about engaging directly with your community, responding to comments and creating content based on viewer suggestions has strengthened my relationship with my audience. It shows you value their input, which can turn casual viewers into loyal subscribers. That's a great point, Aria. Engagement doesn't just stop at making content. Analytics suggests that channels that invest time in community building, like starting conversations in the comments or hosting live Q&As, see a significant increase in retention rates. So building a community seems just as important as the content itself. Maxwell, are there particular metrics that content creators should focus on to gauge their community engagement effectively? Definitely. Besides the obvious metrics like views and subscriber count, you should pay close attention to comments, likes, and shares. The average watch time and retention rate give insights into how captivating your content is. Also, don't ignore the analytics on YouTube's community tab once you have access to it. It's a goldmine for understanding what your audience enjoys. I've noticed the community tab isn't utilized by many creators as much as it should be. It's a fantastic platform for teasers, polls, and even behind the scenes content, which can drastically improve audience engagement. It sounds like being successful on YouTube is about much more than just uploading videos. It's about fostering relationships, understanding your audience, and using every tool at your disposal. Precisely, Luna. The most successful YouTubers see their audience as a community and not just viewers. This mindset shift is critical for long-term success on the platform. Moving from metrics and engagement, what role does consistency play in building a successful YouTube channel? Consistency is key. It's not just about the frequency of your uploads, but also maintaining the quality and theme of your content. Your audience should know what to expect and when. This predictability builds trust and loyalty, which are essential for growth. Exactly, Aria, and the analytics support this. Channels with a consistent posting schedule tend to have higher engagement rates. YouTube's algorithm also favors channels that keep viewers returning on a regular basis, which boosts your visibility on the platform. So in essence, consistency helps in forming a habit for your viewers, and this habit formation is crucial for channel growth. How do you balance the need for consistency with the demand for high quality content? That's the challenge, isn't it? Planning and batching content can help a lot. I often shoot multiple videos in a day and then spread out the editing and publishing. This way, I'm not constantly under pressure and I can ensure the content quality doesn't drop. Leveraging analytics can also inform your content strategy. By understanding which videos perform well, you can focus your efforts on creating similar content. This not only ensures consistency, but also aligns with your audience's preferences, effectively killing two birds with one stone. Insightful strategies there. It's clear that a successful YouTube channel requires more than just hitting the upload button. Analytics, engagement, consistency, and understanding your audience are all pieces of the puzzle. Any final thoughts before we wrap up? I'd say to anyone looking to start or grow their YouTube channel, be patient and persistent. Success doesn't happen overnight, but with the right strategies and a consistent effort, it's definitely achievable. And don't forget to enjoy the journey. Creating content should be fun. Passion shines through and can be the difference between a good channel and a great one. Well said, both of you. Thank you, Aria and Maxwell, for sharing your insights and experiences. And thank you to our listeners for tuning in. Here's to monetizing your mind and making your mark on YouTube. Until next time, keep creating, keep engaging, and keep analyzing.